We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today we are going to be talking about a watch that you should absolutely not purchase. Now, in the videos that I make, I'm sure that you know if you watch them, if you don't watch a couple of them, a recurring theme that happens in the show is I mention that you should buy what you're going to wear and buy what you like. Interestingly enough, this is going to be an exception because I just cannot let anyone that I'm talking to with you out there on the internet or my friends or anyone else, I would give this recommendation and you should not purchase, I'll say it, a Gerald Charles watch with one caveat if you can buy the watch very cheaply. We're going to talk about some of the reasons why and also why I think that somehow they're able to do pretty well for themselves, but I don't think it's going to last very long. Before we do that, on the wrist today, Rolex OP Ois Perpetual 39 discontinued with the red grape code word for purple dial. Um, for those of you out there that uh, know the watch, you know that this has become a little bit desirable in recent times. And uh, I don't know. I like it. I think it's a great size. Unfortunate Rolex discontinued this model. I know many of you share that as well. So Gerald Charles, what is it? You know, it's a brand that is, you know, originally founded by Gerald Genta, I believe in the early 2000s. Gerald Genta, if you're not familiar, most of you are at this point if you're online watching watch videos. Anyway, if you're not, Gerald Genta designed many of the most iconic watches in existence, all the way from the Universal Genève Pole Router, which was this, one of his earliest watches, if not his earliest for another brand, all the way through the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. You have the Patek Philippe Nautilus and many other iconic watches. And even throughout until this day and probably into the future, many watches from other brands have been inspired by Gerald Genta's Think, the Gerard Perigo Laureato, and so many others inspired by this designer. Many people in the watch industry kind of revere him as the best watch designer to ever exist. But I mean, how do you really rate that besides, you know, the number of models? And he, he just spent so much time doing this. So he had a brand called Gerald Genta, go figure his name. And it featured a lot of interesting things. Some of the complications that he loved to use, which were jump hours and retrogrades. We stock these watches all the time at DelrayWatch.com. And when, when we talk about pricing, by the way, and this is really the number one reason why I'm telling you not to buy this Gerald uh, Charles brand, uh, we'll talk about that later in the video. Pricing, I know that's always a conversation to be had. Uh, but nonetheless, you had Gerald Genta, and it was a brand that, it was there. It existed. Some people bought the watches, but now that he's become more popular, he died in 2011, by the way, but... Uh, Gerald Genta, as he, as a designer, has become more popular because of, of models like the, the Royal Oak taking off in popularity, as well as the Nautilus and the Ellipse and, and even the Pole Router for that fact. He's become more popular, albeit he's no longer living. And so eventually the brand Gerald Genta was sold off to another company. They still make the watches. You know, Bulgari will make the Gerald Genta watches. They'll pair it up. They'll do some Daniel Roth because they bought that brand as well. Um, but... After he sold the brand, he, he did Gerald Charles instead of Gerald Genta. And if you look at his original watches, the, it was the biggest flop. The biggest flop. Gerald Charles, if you look at the, the models, I think one of them is called like the Nebulous or something like that. If it's not called the Nebulous, it looks like it deserves to be called the Nebulous because it looks like some kind of futuristic, I mean, in the most radical definition of futuristic that is what the watches look like some kind of alien blob type thing look up the watch i'll put a picture here of one of them actually but let's talk about the gerald charles brand so he starts as gerald charles brand it moves on it kind of disappears you know unfortunately you know the guy he does pass away in 2011 now come out the last couple years you have kind of this revitalization of the gerald charles brand he has survivors you know in his family his wife may still be alive you know i'm sure he has some children something like that whoever owns the estate in the namesake of gerald genta not gerald charles because he can't use gerald genta bulgari owns that and they use it every so often they came out with this new gerald charles brand which is supposed to be you know the latest and the greatest and it's supposed to be, um, you know, from almost, if you look at the imagery on the website, check out the Gerald Charles website. I'll also put some imagery here. They kind of try to make it seem like it's coming from the bench of Gerald Genta. 
it you know the the website doesn't really talk about the fact that he's been long gone for you know now about a decade a little over a decade they don't talk about that what they talk about you know this is like this fine craftsmanship from the design of this person but he's not designing these watches he's long gone and you know what's the difference okay maybe his 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 wife designs the watch in my opinion that doesn't really do a whole lot for that now the watches are okay in terms of the spec you can see they're they're adequately finished they're not poorly done in terms of the finishing of the case and the designs. I like them. It's kind of in the aesthetic or something that he would design, I guess, in my opinion. Um, but where the biggest problem I have with this and why I cannot recommend this watch brand to anyone is the pricing. Now, there's a bit of a frenzy, I would say, in certain watch communities. Most of it, I'm noticing, is happening in Europe. There's many authorized dealers for this Gerald Charles brand in Italy. I think probably there's an Italian company that owns some stake, if not the majority of this, and are licensing the name. I can't prove any of that, but it seems like that from the way that certain things are described. Uh, but the, the retail price, they have a gold version of this Gerald Charles, and they're charging something like $31,000 for this watch. Now, for $31,000, you would think, wow, this must be on the level of fp jorn right a living legend someone that makes actually pretty finely very highly well done watches not even close this particular watch is featuring a voucher movement which i'll admit it's not an out of movement these are high, high more sophisticated highly craftsman worked over movements compared to something like a stock at a movement which a lot of brands that are not quite in this range, but almost are guilty of using. So I'll give him that, but the movements are maybe $1,000. The components together, the piece of the metal, another $1,000. They're having an entry level, probably an entry level uh, watchmaker put this together, if not put together entirely by Vaucher because they do have an assembly plant themselves uh, in Switzerland and they're charging 31,000. So, you know, their, their cost is something like two grand and, you know, do the math quite a spread there for a brand that flop didn't exist and then they kind of use the namesake but what really shocks me we'll talk about another model as well is that people actually want these you go on instagram you see loads of celebrities a lot of sports players in a lot of italian celebrities yeah I, i'm not familiar with quite literally any of them but there's different soccer players or football players and i think there's some golf players and some singers and you can see on their instagram so many people and there seems to be a demand i've seen collectors that have kind of fallen into this trap and they bought the watches either to speculate or put in their watch boxes to give you an example we'll look at this stainless steel example which is a little bit older i think maybe two years older than this gold model and this is is basically using a so prod movement with the a10 which they have their own little fancy name for uh, a gerald charles caliber but it's a so prod movement a pretty low end or low to very bottom middle end kind of off the shelf movement it's the a10 it's a 200 dollars movement you can buy this watch on eve i mean the the movement on ebay for 200 dollars. yeah that that does happen in the watch industry but i mean you're getting a, wa a watch movement that's going to be in a hamilton for 500 retail at a watch that was retailing at that time for nine thousand six hundred dollars uh, with now resale values or what people are asking, but you can see by this picture it's reserved, so the deal may happen at $21,000. Now, $21,000, that's more than the retail price of a Daytona. Sure, you can't get the Daytona, but you can buy two Rolex stainless steel Submariner ceramic bezels for $21,000. You could buy two Submariners, one for you, one for your friend, or two for the same risk for the price of a Gerald charles watch now in what world would that make sense now some people are saying well this is the greatest designer to ever exist in watches maybe i'm not sure i'd have to think about that he's certainly notable and pretty great some of the designs that he's done i like a lot but he's gone these models are being put together and made and the iterations are being come up with by just someone else who knows who's actually doing this and so it doesn't really do a whole lot. So sure, you get the guy's first and middle name on the watch dial, but is that going to make a difference in the future? Some say, oh, well, these are very limited run. These are going to be high, highly desirable and collectible in the future. So of course I can pay 21 if it's worth 42 next year. I don't think it's going to happen. There's no reason that it should happen. And I'll give you an example at Delray Watch 
we handle the the Gerald Genta watches, you know, his original brand all of the time. You know, we get these watches in. Collectors love them. I love them. They're unique. They're quirky. And they mark a very interesting time in history where the guy actually did something for himself and not for the other major brands. And there's an interesting story behind it and a person. Having that person like a Jorn name or a Voodlinen or always having that uh, that name on the watches. It helps a lot when we're talking about these kind of interesting, sophisticated watches. But unfortunately, you know, you can't have two. You know, imagine that you had Kerry Voodlinen and he came out with another brand of Kerry. You know, it's going to be like a light junior version. That being said, considering the, um, the Gerald Gento watches that we do stock, I mean, they're trading at fractions of what the retail prices were. I mean, great buys if you buy them pre-owned, but if you were to buy one of those watches for over retail or uh, even at retail, if you could, no way that is the watch going to trade more. And we're talking about watches that were produced decades ago. Yes, you have the one-off here and there. He did a Disney collaboration. Those are kind of through the roof. And when you're talking about these Gerald Charles, I just cannot help but interject my opinion out there into the watch collecting stratosphere on the internet because there are people I see that are unfortunately making this mistake. I think it's a huge gamble. It really is not a very extreme gamble. And you can see on their Instagram and all the people that have them, it seems a lot like a marketing ploy. And I don't think that the quality is there. Commensurate with the price, you can buy comparable watches for a thousand two thousand dollars three or four thousand dollars you can get a watch that beats these on every front check out most of what we have at delray watch and that would honestly fit the bill because the movements aren't even that well decorated look at the voucher movement the voucher stock movements on their website are more heavily decorated than the, the movements they're putting in these watches i know i'm being really hard here but i have to drive home this point because like i said i'm seeing fellow watch collectors kind of buy into the hype there's a lot of things out there in the world the nfts the crypto all this stuff and watch collecting i just have to throw that out there just for anyone that's listening or maybe on the fence for this brand please take my advice in consideration and at least think about it before jumping on and assuming that this is going to be a knockout collectible brand in the future. What do you think about this brand? Have you heard it? Have you not heard of it? I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.